who say yes. Uh, you know, all the index Tango Con 2015, local, Tony Bemis, VPN, Home Networking. Server at home is making sure all the certificate or the certs are matching and and everything. So I've only gotten to run run off of my firewall like this. Um, and so you can go through, and that's where you can uh, enable and disable, and which interfaces you can have a run on your blue network. So on your blue network, say if you want to, if you want to be super secure and you still don't trust that people in your neighborhood aren't sniffing your wireless network, you can always connect in to the VPN on here, even though you're still on the internal network, but then it'll be a, a, a encrypted tunnel. Uh, other services, you can set up a time server, so all the, the PCs in, internal in your house is pulling from, uh, from this, so everything has the exact same time. You can do QoS settings, and I had this running at one time. And what's nice about QoS is that your home routers and the home internet will max out, but once you have a couple devices that are maxing out the bandwidth, the whole performance just pegs down, and it's really bad. So what you do is you use QoS to say, don't give any single device more than 75%, uh, and then, or, or no, that's every device in your house. You cannot use more than 75% of the bandwidth, and then your overall performance will be better, even though you're only using three quarters of the possible. Um, because there was a talk here a couple years ago that said, why is my internet slow at home? And they said that it's, um, I think he said it was the cache uh, on the ISP routers are being filled up too much. Something like that. So if you only use 75%, then you won't fill that cache before it has a chance to clear it. Uh, then you get better performance. So that's where QoS is really nice for that. Um, intrusion detection, this is the other thing I always turn on. Uh, and you can say which interface do you want it to turn it on to. Red is always the one you want to run it on. You can turn it on for the other ones if you're super uh, paranoid, but Red is you know, the one coming in from the outside. And what it does is it analyzes every single connection to your house. And if somebody sees that you have a web server running, they're gonna try to hit other ports or other uh, you know, services on your router or on your home. And Snort goes through and checks those. And if it looks like it, they're trying to you know, intrude, then it'll, it'll completely block it and, and keep it safe. So it's a really nice, uh, uh, option with these routers. Uh, Snort has, there's one thing you have to set up, you have to get this OINC code, and it's this big long thing, it's free to get. You go to their website and um, and register, and oh, you know, I'm not connected to anything right now, so it's not going to work. Uh, but you register it, they give you the OINC code, and then it automatically updates the rules uh, all the time for you. So then on the firewall, this is where firewall rules, where you're going to be doing the port forwarding. That's what we're talking about. So I have the four different port forwards running. I have 32400 is for my Plex server, 443 and 22. Uh, these two are for my website and SSH connection, and then I have BitSync, BitTorrent Sync running, uh, so you can open up ports for that too. You can also create a port, and then if you're not using it at the time, just disable it, and it, you don't have to redo it all later. So you can see right here, this is where it's been disabled, uh, so it's not actively letting connections through, but say tomorrow I want to start up my sync again, I can just go in here, turn it back on, and then it allows it through. Uh, so there's a lot of options with firewalls and stuff. I, I'm not an expert on firewalls right now. Uh, but you can go through and create firewall groups and other firewall options. Firewall groups are nice. 
uh, in a larger environment. So you can say, I have this device that always has to do one thing. You know, always has to get out to a specific website. And you don't want it to do anything else but getting out to the internet. You can set up a group or get out to that one website. So you can set up a group and say, you know, whenever this device is trying to access out, it can go. Well, then you, you get another device that does the exact same thing. And instead of creating all the same rules for the, the next device, you can just say, add that device to the group. And it can do everything the same. And continue doing that. On corporate firewalls, that's what they use all the time. Because um, say, we, like at work, we have lots of offsites and we have firewalls in between everything. And so we can say anytime we have this group, like it's our VPN tunnels, we can say they, are, they get this uh, firewall group and they're allowed to connect to this, you know, 50 different things that are inside our network and it's blocked from everything else. And all they have to say is, these are the source addresses now, go, and it's good to go. Um, IP tables also is if you want to get in and manually set all of these uh, firewall rules, IP tables are the way to do it. Uh, if you're good at IP tables, you can get on the command line and set it if you want. Uh, it's just the, the web interface for this right here. This means the same thing as uh, something else on here, but I'm not seeing it at the moment. Yeah, so you have all of these options to go through. I, I, I actually, I do not know IP tables at all, so I, this is the first time I've actually looked at it. It would probably be a very question forward. Yeah. Oh, right there, yeah. Oh, somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. They have a lot of them. Right. Maybe it's just straightforward, I don't know. Uh, you form something forward. Forward, that's what forward. You're doing. No. Whatever. Yeah, it's somewhere. You can enter a forward rule somewhere. Right. Shows some stuff, but I still don't see the no, don't see source and destination for you. Right. So. I don't know. So if you like IP tables, there you go. Uh, IP fire. This is one of the nice things that I said. There's there's uh, modules you can add in, and this is how you do it. And it's just it's similar to using a package manager on on your Linux computer. You go in here. You say I want to add in Bluetooth. And you say plus, it adds it over here, it installs it, and you're good to go. You know, if, and what I have running right now, I have nano installed. So when I'm on command line, I like to use nano instead of VI. Uh, transmission, transmission is a BitTorrent sync client with a, a web interface. So again, I have that on here. Um, and you can tell, like, the, I have a specific uh, Linux kernel that I wanted to use. But in here there's all sorts of ones. There's Squid, there's uh, MS, uh, uh, Amadvis, which I think is a, it's an antivirus. So you can have it, you can have the antivirus running on your router and filtering all email and stuff that's coming through and block it if it's, if it has a virus built into it. Uh, and you can see this list just goes on and on. There's there's all sorts of things you don't want to run on your main firewall router. You know, there's things like you can have uh, Samba running on here. You can have, uh, I don't know, what, SQL. You can run an SQL server, QEM server, uh, you know, rsync. And a lot of this stuff you don't want on your main router. But, say, if you learn how this works, and you want to have another one internal, you can you can set up an IP cop or IP fire as your home uh, uh, fire or um, fire server. You know, so it's all it's just things like that. It, it's a lot of funny things that you can add in, uh, and then and then also updates. You can see right here, it's been. 
I don't know how it's been two hours since it's connected or didn't update, but uh, it, it goes through and automatically refreshes it and checks to see if there's updates. And if there's a new update, it'll populate over here. And you can say, you can click on that and say download and install. And it, it just automatically does it. There's no um, you know, extra configurations you have to do to get to the new version. Of that. And then logs also. You can go through and uh, if you're trying to figure out why something's not going through, uh, or you know, you think somebody's trying to hack in, you can look at the logs here, and like IDS logs, and you can look to see you know, what's trying to connect. Log summary. Uh, oh, you know what? Because I haven't used it this year at all. Let's go back to December. Oh. Uh, this is a bad, because um, it was in January is when I replaced my router, so it could have cleared it off since then. But there's all sorts of logs you can use, forwarding logs, and like I said, IDS, URL filtering. Uh, but what I, what I used uh, from time to time is it tells you what your traffic in and out is. Right now it's zero and zero because we're not really connected to the internet. But if I want to see how much my uh, Google Hangout is using, how much bandwidth, I can just hit this and it tells you right on the dashboard of how much bandwidth is going out. Uh, and that's also in, in these graphs. You can look at um, external, I believe. And oh, yeah, these are just the quick view. Uh, let's look at the year. Well, we had our the end of my time today. So if, if there's any questions while I'm packing up, you want to come and look at my stuff? Yeah? Speculate that uh, I have fiber optic internet to my home. What would the system requirements to pass that to the network be? I would go with the P4 PC, uh, and your, uh, you'd have to have the fiber interface on your, and you can get a PCI card that has fiber interface instead of having uh, ethernet. Or it's, it's still ethernet, it's um, a copper, Cat5 connection, you, you would just have a fiber connection at that. Um, and so you want to run a PC at that point because then it's easier to find PCI cards than to find a USB device or something that would do it. Um, but there's also, uh, there's, you can get um, fiber transceivers. So you can have fiber coming in, like fiber, and then it makes it copper at that point. So if you already have your home firewall set up and you don't want to mess with messing with it, then you can get that transceiver and do the same thing. Yeah. Do you have any feel for the load introduced by the encryption and decryption of VPN? How much more CPU you need to handle that? Um, it all depends on, I think it's uh, how many connections you're going through that and the bandwidth you're using. Uh, there definitely will be more. Uh, but like I said, it's, uh, PFSense says they can run it with, you know, a, Hundred uh, gigahertz processor, and so you know if you're using anything from the last ten years, really it'll work. Okay. So a five-year-old PC, it's really probably if you're going to be looking at running, say if you're going to run this in a, a business line, and you want to put uh, open VPN router, then I would definitely go with a new PC, probably a, a dual core, probably two gigs or four gigs of RAM. But yeah, I mean, that's when you're, you have 20, 30 people connecting in at the same time. Okay. You can also do point-to-point -point VPNs with this. Uh, so you have, in a business environment, you have, you can have one of these IP fires out at all the locations and have it connect all into one. Uh, and then, so you, you can have everybody on the same logical network. Uh, but all right, again, Tony Venus. Uh, BemisHosting.com. Uh, we, uh, we're also going to run our podcast, the Sunday Morning Linux Review, Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So get up and come see us. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.